Jean Pascal Tricois, who is the CEO of Schneider Electric. Uh, I did a close. Good morning, to you, sir. Good morning. I did a closed door session in Paris with a lot of very big energy CEOs, and one of them turned around, one of the biggest in the world, turned around and said, well, "We've got to be honest with people. People are going to lose a lot of jobs from digitalization." Do you agree with him? No. I don't agree with that. I just think it's going to be a displacement. So what you see today is acceleration of a few trends. One is absolute digitization of every facility for more efficiency, and you're speaking about energy. Mm. The other one is uh, Industry 4.0. That means this convergence of IT technologies with operation technology, massive injection of artificial intelligence. Mm. On, on one side, of course, it's going to obsolete jobs. But on the other side, it's creating a lot of new opportunities. Just make one example. Buildings, 80% inefficient. Mm. Uh, if you want to go back to those buildings with digital technology to make them far more efficient, 30%, 50% of energy efficiency, plenty of service tech jobs on the ground to deploy those technologies. And, and that's new jobs. And actually, when, when we put figures behind that, uh, we see a sector which is going to grow by 10%, at least in Europe, for instance. Just take that Why example. Why can't it be done by machines? I mean, there's this wonderful device. It's very expensive. It comes from America, and it's called uh, SAM, which is a semi-automated mason. And it can put, in a straight line, albeit mm. at the moment, it can put more bricks in in one day by a power of about six than a normal bricklayer. Because 96% of the buildings you're going to retrofit are already built, and you need just to wire, to plug, to put those, those digital things together. Yeah. And that's create new jobs, very interesting jobs, <laughs> new capabilities. We just need to skill people. We just need to empower prosumer, professional consumer, because this is where the change will come. It won't come by institutions. It will come by people who say, I want to consume less, I want to save, I want to consume green, I want to share better, I want to store my energy. So there are plenty, plenty of new things that we are pioneering and deploying today, and, and I see a massive acceleration. It's true also in industry. I mean, people speak about robots, uh, but robots work with people, and it's not only about robots, it's about bringing more help augmented capabilities to shop floor operators by bringing them indications, improving their security with augmented reality, and all of this is now. But Let, oh, I just wanted to move on because um, we've got limited time. Uh, one of the issues that's come up here this year in the surveys is how much more focused on geopolitical risks CEOs are. Uh, as we come into the beginning of the year here, uh, we've had a, a pushback on a Chinese bid for a U.S. business. Uh, we've had Donald Trump roll out um, sanctions here on Chinese electrical goods. You did double-digit growth in China uh, uh, over recent years. Are you worried that we are seeing the early salvos of a growing dispute between the United States and China and companies like yours could get trapped in the middle? Well, of course, we prefer an open world where countries cooperate smoothly together. It's always better for everybody, by the way. It's, uh, it's better for companies, it's better for people. An open world is, uh, is always better. At the same time, we've always developed our business as very multi-local because uh, our solution has to be market-specific, segment-specific. Every country is different in terms of culture in ways to approach things. Uh, we are in a brick-and-mortar and digital world, so we have to be very adapted to each market we, we touch. So to a, to a point where we can adapt to any kind of, uh, of new situation. But what we sell and the way we sell in China is profoundly different from what we, did in, uh, we do in the U.S. or what we do in Europe. Is there a different attitude? To, you're based in Hong Kong. Yeah. Now, there's a reason for that, because you're, you're looking eastward, you're looking at Asia. Is there a different attitude in that part of the world than there is in this part of the world? Yes, of course. I mean, because, because the problem is that when you wake up in the morning, you don't face the same reality. At the end of the day, anyway, there is an underlying very strong trend, which is more globalization, because we are all connected through the same tools. We all travel more. We, we connect with institutions which are more international. But at the same time, we don't see the world in the same manner. And the beauty of things like Davos or all the other international meetings is help people understand the other people's point of view and try to find connecting points. Yeah, and the dim sum's not as great in this part of the world. It's much better. I, I, I confirm, but speak about yeah. the phone here. Yeah. 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 Well, you're uh, both either current or former <laughs> inhabitants of Hong Kong, so I'll take your word for it. Uh, Jean-Pascal, it's been a pleasure. All too brief, but thanks so much for coming and seeing thanks. us. Thank uh, Jean-Pascal Tricois, the CEO of uh, Schneider what Electric. What about...